Welcome to 9 News Plus, I'm Chris Bianchi. Tomorrow marks one year since the Marshall Fire tore through Boulder County, destroying more than 1,000 homes and killing two people. Since that day, we followed what recovery looks like for three families who lost their homes. just getting comfortable with living in the uncertain forecast. Oh, in here, so this is... Um, the triage room? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good way to put it, triage room. So Nick and Katie Farrington think back. about life in stages. The stage right now... Hey, sweet girl. Hi. How was your day? Good. Good. It's the one where they have great jobs and two kids, Harper and Emery. Hey, baby cow. How was your day? Good. In this phase of life, they also had their dream home in Boulder County. In 2020, they lived in an RV on Panorama Drive while they scraped the house that was here and built this. We weren't planning on going anywhere, and we'd even said, uh, like, we're never building a house again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we were ready to, to be there till who knows when. <laughs> when came on December 30th, 2021. Yep, we walked up the hill right there. Yep, everything's gone. The Marshall Fire forced them back in time. It really was living in the newness of so much uncertainty and where are we gonna live? You know, we're in our third place now and we've got a fourth place lined up for June. My room was that that metal pole to the um those things, right? The grief of what they lost came quickly. Tears for three days straight. Oh gosh. But nearly two months after the fire. Right, break. Nick and Katie are done crying. This is the set that my mom got us oh, that yeah. my wife hates. <laughs> the laughter comes easier as they work toward what's next. At least I don't have to take down Christmas lights this year. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter, even as they look at the reality of being $800,000 underinsured. It was just a comfort level where we were at. And now I would say I'm, a, I'm scared to spend a dollar because I don't know how much, you know, we're going to have to make up. Yeah, we did the deck. Yes, that was a thing of beauty, by the way. That was, did you still, fr was it still framing too? Still yes. framing, nice. yeah, foot awesome. apart. Despite that financial hit, the Farringtons still plan to rebuild. There's a little bit of excitement that we can make some changes, but there's a little bit of sadness that we have to go through this again. <laughs> yeah. The builder, he understands. Yeah, were you guys at home when the fire yeah. started? Or, so you had to like watch it come in? I didn't, uh, yeah, we left with nothing. Josh Mitchell will not only rebuild Nick and Katie's house, but his own too. It's kind of therapeutic, I guess, in a sense. I mean, it's like, this is what I always do every day. So for me, it seems a little bit easier. Each step forward reveals more loss. Good luck with your build process. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's overwhelming, knowing so many ended up in a stage of life they never anticipated. How are you doing? She said she mixed because my house got burned down in the fire, and then she could use help with rebuilding our house. But then she... <laughs> so we'll have to frame that That was one. on her mind. <laughs> it's true. I, it's like cute and true and mixed emotions for sure. <laughs> but Nick and Katie find comfort going through a new chapter, knowing... They're not alone. I hope you get another house even cooler. <laughs> so many people are motivated to just help the fire victims. Um, you want to say that? Uh, I hate that word. <laughs> oh, I don't like b being called a victim, but... I heard recently burnouts, or like the burnouts. <laughs> uh, the burnouts? Okay. Maybe I could do better with that one. So today is day two of debris removal. Um, it's a big moment for us just to get the process going. You got twisted. There are obvious reasons to celebrate. It's coming. Come on. It's going. You. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's the reason for this gathering. It's real glass. You can just throw it at the house <laughs> when you're done. Really? There's plenty of equipment to clean it out. 
I will find any excuse to have a happy hour. But uh, no, this one never crossed my mind to do it here, but why not? This happy hour might be unconventional. Here's to taking the first step to rebuilding. But Nick and Katie Farrington Cheers. need to celebrate after so much loss. So she grabbed our safe and um, some pictures, and that's it. When the Marshall Fire destroyed their home on Panorama Drive, it was hard to see this kind of hope. Good to see you. Good to see you. The beginning of debris removal is the first sign of what's to come. Up, 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 up. The, you know, these were the fanciest ones on the street. They celebrate alongside neighbors who lost their homes too. So Dave, when are y'all getting started? And the few neighbors who didn't. How are you? Good. Good, good. I'm so happy for you guys. Oh, you know, it's... We're excited too. We're, we're just ready to get going. I'm ready for you guys to come back because it's lonely down there. <laughs> <laughs> Even though this road has emptied out, community stayed put. And so thanks for sharing it with us and I hope we get to be a part of all of yours too. So. And that's something to celebrate any day. <laughs> Here's to celebrating every step of this journey. All right. Here, here. The girls have not wanted to come back out here until we have progress. When life is a climb. We know we're going to love this home whenever it's ready. Nick Farrington believes that's when lessons are learned. Huge hole had to get dug. And now we've got concrete going in. Foundation is going in. So actually, they just finished today. While they were waiting for the foundation to finally go in, the family moved five times over the year, a climb not expected by Katie Farrington. No, I didn't think it would be that many times. It's funny, whenever he says five, I'm like, I guess it was five. Um, it just went by so fast. You never felt like you were in your place, you know, in your own place. Uh, you're always in somebody else's place. Now, their place is finally turning into reality, and they have moved to one final rental, they hope, until their so-called dream home is fully rebuilt. A long-term house has provided a lot of, um, yeah, just comfort and, like, yeah, just rest, not knowing that we don't have to get up and do it again next week. All right, so this is the front of the house. The garage is over there. Entrance will be right here. Now, can their the worries can focus on the physical progress. What I understand is once the concrete goes in, some of all the other trades can move a little bit quicker. Um, but this was the bottleneck for a lot of the construction. Now, their worries can focus. So all this will be back, backfilled after the concrete dries. On Nick, leaving the country for two months for work during a critical time for the rebuild. So I worry about that, but I'm going to do my best to stay involved. And, and she's smarter than I am. So she'll keep it going. The climb continues. He's here. He's just you know, 11 time zones away. And so does the learning for parents and kids. We hope this is a just a lesson, a, a milestone, something in their life that they can look back and say, well, our, our house burned down and we were fine and we, like, we can get through anything. So I wasn't really expecting this thing going to happen to my life. The measure of a man's worth should not be found in a pile of rubble. The measure for this man, those who don't know me, I'm Karma Sherpa, can be found in his homeland of Nepal. Every year before the pandemic, Karma Sherpa arranged to have doctors and dentists provide services that cannot be found in his impoverished village. He called them health camps. Yeah, mission accomplished. The sidewalk we get in the, the house here. He has a new mission. We're going to rebuild the house. We don't know how long it's going to take it. How long and how much? Love you, man. Like his friends and neighbors in the Sagamore neighborhood, Karma is worried about insurance. I hope that, you know, will be enough to rebuild. If the money is not enough, I don't know what to do. He's worried about the process. Without knowing much, it's very difficult to, to move forward. So, yeah, this is a learning period for me. But for all that is lost. You know, everything is gone, but this, the flower part is still there. He has a surviving symbol of growth, but more importantly, Shalom Sherpa, and then uh, Sonia, and then Daputi. He has his family. A little short. <laughs> <laughs> they have good karma. You see the lots of silver lining and lots of good part and good part of people and 
the people you know and you don't know them all coming together to help. A couple moving out of state saw on Facebook that these people who for years have given everything had to evacuate with nothing. A sweatshirt, shoes, my sister, my father, and my phone, and that's about it. So that couple gave the Sherpa family their home to stay for free. They had never met Sonia, Sonam, Karma, or Dafudi before. <laughs> we cried. <laughs> we cried. I don't know how long I would survived. One room with my parents and my sister. All the people who are going through, like me, just stay positive and stay strong. Are you rebuilding? Or? We, we want to. Oh, good. You know, yeah, yeah. we want to. So Karma and Dafudi moved to Colorado more than 20 years ago, 13 years in this neighborhood. Amy's and Lisa's, I've talked with them. I have you now. Karma ran a mountaineering tour company out of his home, along with his aid efforts for Nepal. Please stay strong. But Karma says this is what makes a community. I love my neighbor. Uh, I love the area. This is why they have to come back. I cannot really escape from the problem. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. <laughs> yeah. Take care. Yeah. Thank you. Just patiently waiting for what's to come. Sometimes life has to go in stages. Yeah, I'll put it in my car. Especially after losing everything in the Marshall Fire. This house was a refuge offered by total strangers who heard what happened to the family of Karma Sherpa. Yeah, it's very important because after the fire, you know, a lot of uh, places, you know, it's very hard to find a rental place. The next stage is moving to a place where they can stay long. Uh, the next uh, stage, uh, before Dafuti Sherpa can go home. We really hope this is the last house before we move into our new house. Right now, you know, the lot, uh, debris removal is completed. The Sherpas and their two kids are preparing to live in this furnished rental for more than a year. And I hope it doesn't take too long to go into the new house. Yeah, this is it. Sonam Sherpa likes the room. Uh, there is some apprehension on what's to come. But he's tired of the uncertainty, tired of living his life in stages. I'm hopeful that you know this is just going to be like a final long, long stretch that no more issues or no more troubles ahead. He is thankful he doesn't have to share space with the younger Sonia. My sister would just decimate my own room with <laughs> lots of toys, but now there's a separate room, so I hope a separate mess. At least there is one. The Sherpas had no possessions nearly six months ago. Not having much, uh, some situation makes easier, <laughs> especially before moving. Karma says most of the things they do have now were donated, proving to him, with the community's help, they never had nothing. I don't feel at all that I don't have anything. I feel that we have everything, everything we need. They have a place to live, but it's still not home. I mean, your house is your house. We keep work uh, every day and then until we get there, you know, it's a, it's a long journey. Okay, cheers, my friend. Cheers. <laughs> Even without his house. To keep things going, uh, <laughs> you know. Karma Sherpa still wants to be a good host. We just have a good time uh, and a good moment and then share something. <laughs> In the middle of the Marshall Fire Zone, he pours tea, a tradition from his home country, Nepal, with the hope that one day he can share it inside his rebuilt house in the Sagamore neighborhood. The physical structure is, needs to build up, but, but that, will, that will come long. But nearly a year later, his lot is still just a pile of dirt. While some neighboring homes already have construction well underway, I was hoping uh, to put the foundation by end of October. But an insurance shortfall of nearly two hundred thousand dollars delayed the process, leaving his wife Dafuti and their kids wondering why not us. 
but it didn't happen and then it's now it's really cold. Too cold to break ground without increasing costs. We need the money to build a house. Ten months after the fire, building plans were finally made and the Sherpa said they eventually reached an agreement with their insurance to cover the needed costs. So yeah, it took a little while, longer than we expected. Uh, and then finally they are doing the right thing and I think. The right thing. This is a living room, this is a kitchen. To make them whole again. Now we have a more clear picture that we get to build a house. Just like their neighbors. A lot of houses are popping up, that's a good thing just like the thousand others who lost their homes on December 30, 2021. The fire was <laughs> burning right here. One year later, Daffody doesn't think about the home that was destroyed. She thinks about something more important she lost three months after the fire. I lost my dad, so I think more about my anniversary of my dad. There are uh, some challenging day and then some tiring day, but then we just have to deal with that and keep moving forward. Forward with a dream that one year from now then this area is going to be the kitchen and dining room. They can serve tea at home. I hope so, but I don't know. And then there's always surprises come up. A toast to no more surprises. I hope that everybody's back in their own house by this time next year. Just so much family here, and, and we just want to rebuild and stay as one. Come in, come in. This wouldn't be their normal gathering space. I just told him I didn't want to be on film. Well, you're going to. <laughs> as you can see, we're a close tie. We're a close family. Well, she's my sister, but she acts like I'm her mother. <laughs> yeah, she's my best friend. The Chavez family knows what's more important than the location. Man, I he looks just like Opie. Ted has taught his kids yeah. and their kids yeah. to love where they come from. Look at here. The baby of the family won't ever know what the five Chavez homes looked like in Old Town Superior before they burned. That's yeah, just amazing. It's all gone. All gone. Ted lost his home. So did his mom, Elsie. We've been here forever. So it's really hard to see this. And they lived on the same block with other relatives on what they called the Chavez compound with five family homes. Five generations. This is our fifth generation right here. These two are our fifth generation. We want, we want to leave it to them. Yes, we do. There's a lot to go through. This was the kitchen. Ted's kids want their dad to return. It's just mind-blowing. I know the kids want to say, well, do you want to move out? No, I'm not moving out. Maybe when I'm, when the good Lord calls for me, they can take me out. <laughs> but right now I'm staying. We'll get together. This is going to get stronger. We're going to be stronger. <laughs> Bless the cooks. Thank you all for homemade dinner tonight. Getting everybody together, homemade spaghetti and sauce and everything. Somebody needs a plate. This is my granddaughter, Samantha. She's the one that has that little monster little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, I just want to say thank you for all coming for Mom's birthday party. She's 77. Happy birthday, Mom. And I really appreciate you all coming. I didn't expect this. Surprise! <laughs> yeah, it really, it's like a dream, you know. And uh, no, I, I, I just, I'm just thankful to the good Lord that we could do this today. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. If it weren't for the fire, Elsie's birthday would normally be celebrated in Old Town Superior. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> with help, those without houses can feel at home. We just have to go on. It is tough. But just like four years ago, I lost my husband. We were like this. That was tough. So I just think that this is a new beginning. Maybe this is what's supposed to be. <laughs> Celebration is their way of moving forward to cherish 
is what really matters. You can go now. I love you. Thank you for everything. Yes, a lot of memories. But we'll create more. We'll create more. We just uh, we just got to get back up on our feet, get this cleaned up. Man, we wanted the yard cleaned up, but we didn't expect this, huh? <laughs> this moment yeah. yep. is one step closer to living again in the place they call home. Yeah, I pretty much know this yard like the back of my hand. <laughs> Said Chavez lived in Old Town Superior next to his mom, Elsie. Thinking of all the little things that my niece and nephews gave me, my kids gave me when they were little. We couldn't find anything, they're all gone. The Chavez family has lived on this corner for 70 years. Oh, they had to rip up yours and Terry's concrete job. <laughs> we worked hard on that too. <laughs> All those memories are buried in there. How many? All of them. They lost five houses to the Marshall Fire. Yeah, this is a good a good mess. You know, it was time to get rid of all that stuff and quit seeing the memory there, you know. It just wants to make me cry. I'm looking forward to a new beginning and uh, and just praying that everything works out for us so that we can come back home. I can't wait. It's hard, but it's getting done. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I know it. It's sad, huh? It's sad knowing that there's a lot of stuff like we should have been having in the sky. As much as Elsie wanted this day to come, yeah, it doesn't make this moment easier. I'm sorry, you're sad. I'll get over it, Ita. I, I get too sad too fast. So it's gonna be hard to see it go. Hard, yes. You know that the, this feels like, Mom? But necessary to move forward. Kind of like when you bury someone. It's the closure, you know, of uh, burying some, something. It's been a long haul. Long haul, very long haul. So here's Carmen's Corner and that's Carmen's Corner. What the Chavez family sees is not what's here, but what can be imagined. And we're going to have crawl space foundations, no basements. For so long. They've waited to visualize their dreams. Let me show you this as we're closer to this real quick. Ted knows what he sees. A home that I could call home again. <laughs> you want to take a look at the samples now? Your contractor, Mark Stringfellow, has options. Here are the carpet samples. Mm -hmm. Soon, the first of the modular homes will arrive with what they've chosen. The hardwood flooring samples, the laminate. Pick out the cabinets and also the bathroom vanities. I, I see a gorgeous, beautiful house sitting here and a lot of yard work that needs to be done, <laughs> which I'm not doing anything now. I used to say I hate doing yard work, but I actually miss it. So I'm going to give those to you. Okay. Finally, it's something that feels tangible. I'll tell you, there's time I want to give up, but I have family and my friends and they're all praying for us, so got to keep them going. You know, they say, you got to keep going, you got to keep going, we got to have another party. All right, we're going to do that. <laughs> it's like having ants in your pants or antsy now, you know. <laughs> we want to get back. So, but like I said, thank God, we are yeah. going to get back. Hope for the future means more when you can see it. It's just uh, putting more spirit into our bodies, and we know we're going to get here. Yeah.